Hi, welcome to the Kylie Koo Studio. So, we're into July and that means a new prompt for the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And there's a link in the description below to the group. And what we're calling this month's prompt is Colour Families. And that was something that was suggested by a number of group members. So, our challenge for this week within the Colour Families is black and white. And I'm going to do a project today. It's called String Pool Art. I haven't done it before, so I've decided that I'm going to do a little bit of experimenting to begin with. I had the sketchbook, I've got a few of these, had it sitting around for ages, and I just thought, OK, I'm going to use this just to do a bit of experimenting in. I'm going to start with this Winsor & Newton Black Indian Ink. You could try this with some paints, perhaps slightly watered down, uh, possibly watercolour if you could build up enough colour. You know, just experiment in different ways if you'd like to, to try this. So I've had this particular uh, bottle of uh, black ink for years, so I'm not really sure what the quality of it's going to be like. I don't think ink degrades too much, but, you know, I just wasn't sure, but, you know, decided to, to give it a go anyway. So, I'm going to try a number of different things in lieu of string. I didn't actually bring any string uh, to the table with me, but, but I've got that kind of raffia. This is a piece of, it's a kind of flat thread, but I'm also going to use some embroidery thread. You might know it as embroidery floss. I've got quite a few of these. I don't think I'm going to use this green colour at any point, so that seemed quite a good one to experiment with. So I'm going to speed it up here because it does, as always, I work slowly and uh, this does help get through the video just that little bit quicker. So I've poured my ink into this little jar and I'm using the embroidery thread to begin with put a knot in the end of it because it always starts to free. So I left it a minute there, made sure it was completely covered. I've got a heavy book as well. I'm going to put that on top of the pages, on top of my sketchbook, just to give a bit of weight and then I will pull it out. So sorry, I get a bit near to the camera here when I'm pulling the thread out, just about bumped it. So there I go. I've just laid it on. I'm going to put my heavy book on top. Now, as I say, at this point I'm just experimenting because I'm not sure how much ink I need on it. I'm not sure whether to press heavy down on the book or light. And there we go. And I think that's like two spring hairs boxing and they've got antlers. So it's turned out a bit more like blot art, the decalcomania as I did a few weeks ago. So I decide here that mm, maybe there is enough ink still on it and I'll give it another go. I decided to make the thread a little bit shorter. It just felt quite long. So I thought I'll see if there's ink on it and maybe just take a second pull that way. Now I should say this can get a little bit messy. Not much there. If there'd been a bit more ink it wouldn't have been a bad pull at all. Might have looked a little bit tulip-like. So in with that again and trying to get my thread covered. Now I think there's a balance here as to how much ink you actually put on it and perhaps also the way that you put the thread down on the page. So pulled that one and yeah it looks a little bit better than the first. I can see a bit of what I've seen in other places. Anyway I'm going to dry them in between. So here I'm going again and you know at this point you've just seen me pulling a number of them until I start to get something that I think starts to look a little bit better and I do actually end up filling up the sketchbook and that one I thought was pretty good and I like that you get the kind of mirror image on the other page. So just going back looking at those and I'm now going to try the raffia. Now this was difficult to get into the ink, it's much thicker, heavier, wanted to spring out. So I'm just using my scissors there to try and push it down. I have seen people put the thread directly into the bottles. I thought it would be easier this way. 
So I've got that out and it's not going to fold and bend in the way that the embroidery thread did. But you know, I'm going to give it a try anyway. Pull it out. Now I don't know, maybe said already, this is a bit of a messy job and even pulling the string towards me, there was little bits of ink splashing up. And there we go, two big blobs again. So that wasn't terribly successful at all. I think it absorbed too much ink, so when I pulled it out, there was just too much ink came out. So I wasn't really going to get any definition at all. Put that bit of thread in there, just wondering if I pulled it over if it would uh, leave any lines, doesn't really. But you know, for me, everything's just about experimenting. So I've got this piece of kind of flatter thread now. I don't know what it's called, but it, it's flat rather than round. That's the only way I can describe it. And again, I'm just going to put that on the page. Almost made a little face there. Give it a pull. And it's exciting waiting to see what comes out. And that was it. So, you know, my results so far, not great, but it doesn't put me off trying. Still on that piece of flat thread. I try it this time without putting the book down just to see if a different level of pressure on it would make for a better print. And, you know, I can see the start of something there, but still not what I'm kind of hoping for. So, here we go again. See what we get this time. And as I say, it, it was simply about trying different levels of pressure on top, different amounts of ink, on the the, uh, the thread. So again, seeing a bit of shape there, but not getting that kind of nice kind of feathered look that I've seen in some. But it's not going to put me off. I'm going to keep going. This ink dries quite quickly, which isn't so bad. It doesn't take long to dry at all. Again, I've just put that in with just the remnants of the ink that was on it. Just curious to see. And that was it. And I thought, oh, okay, that's better. Like that. So just having a quick look through. Now you might think this is a waste of a sketchbook. I will use this. I will art journal in it or, you know, I'll make these into something. So I don't see this as, as wasteful at all. So I did that one off camera and I really liked it. And I'd paid attention to the way that my I'd laid my thread on the plate, on the page. So, you know, I thought, right, can I replicate that? Because that's the kind of look that I was going for. So I'm going to try it again. Again, not too much ink in there. I think in this case less is more, you know, and I'm getting a better result. So I've laid it out differently. To begin with, I was kind of doing it in big circles. Now I'm kind of doing it from side to side. Here, I pull it again. And yes, this is exactly the kind of way that I want it to go. So another one. I decided I was just going to fill up this book. Yep, a bit too much ink with that one I think. Had elements of it that I thought were quite nice but again not exactly what I was looking for. So I'm, I'm still just trying to see if I kind of can replicate the ones that I like just by laying the string down in particular ways. So I did go slightly different with this one. And actually quite liked the effect there too. So I've only a couple of pages to go. This is one of these projects that once you start it, you could sit and do this over and over and over, or at least I could, because it was quite fun. 
And as I say, you just don't know what you're actually going to get from it. So all the time, trying with different amounts of ink, and I really liked that one. So trying with different amounts of ink and different amounts of pressure. So that last one to me was the one that I was looking for. So I've now taken some black cardstock, I folded it in half, so it's the same size as the pages in, in my journal. I'm going to use some white ink this time. And now that I kind of know how to create the effect that I'm looking for, I'm going to see if I can kind of recreate that on the black cardstock. So this time I decided to push the thread into the, the ink itself, into the, yeah, the ink. This is a white drawing ink. Just using a cocktail stick there that happened to be lying on my desk and just using that to push it in. And what I actually do is I take some of the ink off against the side of the bottle and using the cocktail stick just to try and take some of the excess ink off. So I'm using another bit of the embroidery thread here and again I'm going to go for that kind of similar effect if I can recreate it. And here we go. And I really liked that one. That's where the thread had just landed a little bit, but I'm also, it's also getting some fractals. It's got the dendritic effect there. Here I go with one more. Pulling this one. And again, not bad. Prefer the first, but that one's okay. And again, it's got that nice textured look to it. So what I decide to do here is to see if I can actually add to the design. So I'm going to take that same piece of thread. Now, just showing you here that the black ink had actually gone quite hard on that piece. And uh, and yet the this other piece that I'm using with the white ink, most of the white ink came right off the piece of thread. So I'm just going to try and create a smaller one here just to see if I can build the picture up. And it's, you know, it's okay. I thought some of these looked a bit like those plants that I've now forgotten the name of. Venus flytraps. You know, just the way that they're open at the top. So, you know, that's okay. Prefer the first one, but it's okay. But I've cut them down the middle because I'm just going to do a little bit more detail on maybe a couple of these just to take them through to being kind of finished pieces. Although in their own right, they could kind of stand as is. So just getting another little jar here. Putting some of the white ink in. I will spray some water on it because I really just here just want to do some splatters. Just using my fan brush just to do a few splatters. And it just gives it a little bit of a different look. Do it on the other one as well. And that really just about completes that. I will do a little bit more detail in just a few minutes, but I'm not going to do much to these at all. I decide to work with that last one in my little sketchbook. And what I'm going to do to this one is just put some black splatters on. And I think that really looks good as is. I thought about adding more, maybe some white pen detail, but actually decided against it. I spilt a lot of ink there. So I'm going to use my Montana white paint pen. I also did a little bit with this Uniball Unib pin pen. Just some tiny bits of detail, nothing much at all. I'm not sure it even needed it. Just really bring a bit of definition to, to some of the lines there and not much more. But you can see all the texture there. That's It's really nice. 
So some tiny bits. It, as I say, I, I don't think it needed this at all. I just felt that I needed to play with it a little bit, but not sure it added anything. And I didn't want to overwork it. You know, there, there was the fear that I could end up just doing too much and then kind of spoiling it if I did too much. Putting in a little bit of almost shading there. But, you know, as I was sitting doing it, I was saying it, it doesn't really need this. So, yes, black and white this week. And, uh, you know, it's, it's open to you in the Mixed Media Emporium to interpret that in whatever way you want. This is just... What, what I came up with, and uh, because I hadn't done this before, I thought, well, it'd be good to try something different. And I know so many of you have had fun this past week doing the doodles. So I come back to this one, I'm thinking about doing something to this, and then actually I decide, no, I'm happy with that as it is. The black on the white, I'm just going to leave. This one I decide to actually add a little bit of white detailing to it. So just using that pen, difficult to see white on white via the camera. You can see it. it's better there than I thought it might be. So just tiny little bits of detailing on it. Again, didn't want to, to overdo it, but I do think on this particular one it does enhance it. So as I say, if you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and you'd like to join us, then there is a link in the description box below. Just be sure to answer all the questions when you apply to join. Otherwise, your request is automatically declined. And of course, I'll leave a link to Nina's video, as I always do, in the description box below. So just a few tiny details there and I, I really like the one that's the the black ink on the white page but I also think this white ink on black is very effective. So quite ha quite happy with that. I really like that. The more I see it the more I like it. So there are my kind of examples. So you know, I hope you'll give this a try. Some of you will have done this many times before, I'm sure. Uh, it was a bit of a fad not so long ago, but I thought it was time for me to do it. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care and hope to see you again next time. Bye for now.